You're looking live at Kyle Field, where a lot of changes have taken place over the last 12 months, and today it's the most dramatic few seconds in the $450 million redevelopment. The west side is set to be imploded, and you will see it live in Aggieland on the official Aggie Sports Station, KBTX News 3, and around the world on KBTX.com and 12thMan.com. from the campus of Texas A&M. Kyle comes down, building a new tradition presented by Schaefer Custom Homes. It is a historic day in the history of the 12th man. Welcome to our special coverage of the implosion of Kyle Field. I'm Daryl Bruffett. And I'm Steve Fullhart. We very much appreciate you joining us. And first off, we do want to thank the folks at Aggie Athletics, Texas A&M University, and the A&M system for simulcasting this on the home of Aggie Athletics online, 12thman.com. Of course, KBTX is the official Aggie sports station. We are here on top of the West Campus Garage where the viewing party for the VIPs will be taking place. We've got plenty of angles of Kyle Field to witness as the West Side falls down. Plenty of things to talk about leading up to the implosion of, well, as we used to call it, Professor Kyle's old vegetable <laughs> patch. We're going to look back at the stadium's history. Some reflections from some folks who have covered some ball games here and look at what is next in the redevelopment of Kyle. Daryl mentioned some of those angles. We've got one from Olsen Field at Bluebell Park just down the road. We will hear from the winningest head coach in Aggie football history, R.C. Slocum, set to join us along with former KBTX sports director Ron Crozier. Also, Callaway Villas has been kind enough to let us set up where their location is there along Welburn Road. And A&M System Chancellor John Sharp and Board of Regents Chairman Phil Adams will be kind enough to add their thoughts right before the big moment happens. Now, you may be watching us here on KBTX, KBTX.com and 12thMan.com, but a few folks have also headed over to Reed Arena in order to watch that whole thing happen. There's a big viewing party that will certainly take place. Carla Castillo, I know, is over there as well. We have understood that there are even some folks that camped out last night to find a great spot. Carla, what can you tell us? Obviously, we can see Carla. Carla she is looks clear. Good she morning. does. She looks fantastic, especially for 7 a.m. But uh, she is over there. She is making sure uh, that the fans are uh, going to have a nice view of it. She certainly is as well. But we, I think, have probably the best view in the house, I would we say. Do, we do have a pretty good view. Of course, uh, the thing that I'm concerned about is the fact that, uh, you know, I can remember when the plaza imploded right. and the fact that uh, I think it was uh, Daniel Armbruster was covering yeah. the plaza <laughs> implosion and he was down along Luby's, which was, I don't know, maybe – two blocks down from where the implosion took place and there was a big dust cloud yeah. that engulfed him and you know, I just forgot to bring my dust mask this morning. It wasn't on my to-do list at 4 a.m. when I got up. Well, from what we understand from Greg McClure with Manhattan Vaughn, who we hope to hear from after the implosion, the man in charge of all of this redevelopment, I, I believe the dust cloud is in fact heading right. towards us. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be a little bit dusty. And this man is going to tell us where that winds are coming from. Shell Winkley, Chief Meteorologist, KBTX, joining us now. You know, I took Friday off. When I left on Friday or on Thursday, the wind was supposed to be out of the north. But they've shifted to the east, so, yeah, the dust cloud's going to be uh, coming our way just a little bit. So yeah. you, want, you want to talk a little bit about weather out here? I would like to know what the temperature is. I, I feel like it's in the 40s, probably. <laughs> yeah, definitely what is in the 40s. It's a little chilly out. We've got uh, temperatures sitting in about the upper 40s out across the Brazos Valley, just a few miles over at Easterwood Airport, about three miles from where we're sitting. 49 degrees, that wind is blowing in out of the east at about five miles per hour. Tack on a little bit of a wind chill. That's what Steve's talking about. Feels like 47 degrees. And you got a little bit of a, a fog. The mist has kind of come down. The joke was we were sitting in a cloud, but the visibility has uh, reduced just a bit, down to about six miles, but nothing that's going to stop you from being able to see old Kyle Field come down. That wind, though, again, blowing in from the east, so it's going to be pushing towards the west campus, towards Welburn Road. and towards the uh, rec center as well. We've got uh, past, present, and future represented here today. Ron Crozier. Can I be the present? You can be the, oh, you are currently the present. <laughs> You're the past as well. Past, present, and uh, obviously the future. Now, 82 to 90, you were with KBTX, sports director. Those were some tough time. years too, let me just were tell you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, there was a. Uh, there's some memorable events happening back in the, those years. I was it was say. before the internet, yes. uh, <laughs> and, and I will tell you that there is not a place that I go when people don't go, hey, Ron Crozier, man, Ron has not worked at KBTX in almost, what, a quarter of a century? But you left an impact, my friend, I will tell you that. But here's, here's I've, I've never looked at it as a quarter of a century, but thanks. Here's the interesting thing, though, we were talking earlier. So you started covering Aggie football, 82-ish or so. It's now been more than three decades. You work on the crew on the field, helping those officials do their thing. So you have missed maybe, what, five or six games over 30-some-odd seasons? Yeah, it's, it's close to that. Yeah. It, it, it's been a big change from when we first got here in 82, being on the sidelines, watching the games, recording the games, doing all the work, yeah. to now being a part of the game, albeit a small part, but an integral part. So when you look back at that thing, how do you feel about it coming down here in less than an hour? Pretty much like everybody else here, you know, it, it's exciting. It's uh, you can tell by all the interest of the people that are up here, and some some great stories are going to be shared in the next forty five minutes to an hour. But long overdue. Yes, Thanks. yes, long overdue. Yeah. So uh, she served us well, but it's time to move on. Eighty five. Were you talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> he he has served us well too. Eighty five. That's got to be high on your list too. I know we were talking about that earlier. Ut. That was that was the game, and the score was was perfect. Was Jackie Sherrill's 42nd birthday, and the Aggies beat the Longhorns 42 to 10. All the cotton that was in the locker room, the Aggies had the great goal line stand there towards the end of the game, right there, and it was the the jump start for what we've come to know as the Wrecking Crew. Uh, some great defenses that came through those years, and. You know, we had three trips on the road to Dallas, but it all started with that one big night here at Kyle Field. And I think Shell was born that year. I was, <laughs> was going to throw that out there. I wasn't sure if I should, but uh, yeah, 1985, this guy came to the world. All right, Ron, we'll check in with you a little bit later. Excellent. Obviously, Shell, you as well. Thank you guys very much. Yeah, we're going to run down uh, some of the most memorable games at Kyle Field that people that went to kbtx.com and voted on to let us know what, hey, their memories were. And as Ron said, his was 1985. But the one that I think, uh, well, we've got three big games. Yeah. And Cody Coyle is going to look at all three of those ball games. And right now we're going to look at number three. Uh, are we? Is no, that not right? No, I think we're going to break now. Okay. Yeah, the music says we're going to break. Okay. <laughs> we're going to head off to break. Sorry. Hey, Kyle Field's coming down. That's what matters here, and we're just a few minutes away from it. We, from it, we have got a history of Kyle Field to look at as well. And again, as Daryl mentioned, the big games that are happening. But there's what this company has done before. We're going to run down a few of the major demolitions that have taken place from Controlled Demolition, Inc. There's R.C. Slocum. He's the man in charge for so many years, for so many wins. We're going to take a look back at some of his memories. He'll be joining us here in a little bit. At Schaefer Custom Homes, we believe that homes start with families. Our commitment to you starts at the design conception stage and ends with on-time completion. Our hands-on management will be evident throughout your project. Log on to SchaeferCustomHomes.net. Do you know what is lurking inside your vents? Over time, dust, dirt, and other harmful allergens accumulate, leaving your air unhealthy to breathe. At Green Duck Services, we pride ourselves on being experts when it comes to keeping the air in your home or business healthy and pollution-free. Our team of highly skilled technicians are efficient and pay extra attention to the details. Call today for your free estimate. If you don't remember the last time you cleaned your air ducts, it's time. Green Duck Services. Breathe easy. Hi, I'm Jared and Alicia McLeod. <laughs> What is going on with you today? I had to sleep on the couch last night because someone was snoring. Why don't I take it from here? You're not you when you're sleepy. Shop at the Sleep Station for the best brands at the most affordable prices. We're a Tempur-Pedic elite retailer and now in two locations to better serve you. I don't know why you're laughing. You're sleeping on the couch tonight. <laughs>
Check out postoakmall.com for extended holiday shopping hours. Schaefer Custom Homes Superior Construction reflects a keen eye for details and workmanship. We build green because it impacts the environment and offers you a natural-based product. We'll make your home building and buying experience as trouble-free as possible. Log on to SchaeferCustomHomes.net. KBTX's live coverage of the implosion of Kyle Field. We are calling it Kyle Comes Down, but we have to give out a shout-out to operations manager Mandy Risky. When we were throwing around titles to what we were going to call this, she says, how about now falling at the west side of Kyle Field? You actually wanted that to I be the I voted that as my number one. I thought that should be the title. But well, I got it in. I got overruled, but yeah, that was a great, great thought by Mandy and very clever, and yeah. uh, I applaud her for those efforts. She even thought about getting uh, the voice of the Aggie band to actually voice that. So that the Colonel, she yeah. Gonna, she was to take that even further. Absolutely. Well, she had some input. You've been having some input on this broadcast as well because over the past week we've been asking you to go to kbtx.com and vote on the most memorable game in the history of Kyle Field here at News 3. We will be counting down from 3 to 1 over the course of this broadcast. And as I misspoke earlier, but as I am going to be correct now, it's saying Cody Coyle now has a look back at number 3. November 10th, 2010, the Aggies and Nebraska Cornhuskers in a defensive battle. A then Kyle Field record crowd, 90,079 fans saw A&M and Nebraska deadlocked at three into the fourth quarter. Both defenses dominated, A&M enough for the Aggie faithful to bring back their favorite chant. Miller picked up two sacks in the game and safety Trent Hunter came up with two key interceptions. Cyrus Gray ran for 137 yards in the game, including some key runs to get the Aggies in position for Randy Bullock's game-winning 19-yard field goal. The defense came up with another stop. The Aggies ran out the clock. Fans rushed the field as the 18th ranked Maroon and White knocked off number nine Nebraska 9-6. Obviously, one memory right there, and certainly over the years, so many memories have been made in the minds of so many Aggies and Aggie fans here at Kyle. Yeah, John Wilson is now going to take a look back at some of the history of Kyle Field. What we saw this season can be traced back to 1905. Edwin Jackson Kyle, the Dean of Agriculture and President of the Athletic Council, donated land and put up bleachers for 500 spectators. A year later, the Corps of Cadets expressed their appreciation for Kyle by unofficially naming the new field after him. That changed in 1956 when the Texas A&M Board of Directors officially named Kyle Field after Edwin Kyle Jackson. Capacity at the stadium would continue to increase. In 1927, construction began on concrete stands. The new $365,000 concrete stadium was complete in 1929 in time for the Aggies Thanksgiving game against Texas. The stadium had 32,890 permanent seats and 5,000 temporary seats. A 13-year stretch from 1967 to 1980 saw some big changes. In 67, second decks were added. In 70, the playing surface changed when artificial turf was installed. By 1980, the the third decks were finished along with suites and a new press box. In 1996, the field changed again. The artificial turf was gone and natural grass was back. The real stuff has stayed since. 1998 was a huge year for the stadium, which would give it a new look. The old horseshoe in the north end zone would be gone, replaced by the zone. Once completed, Kyle Field's new capacity was 82,600. The south end zone had a different look heading into the 2003 season. The bright football complex was completed. While you see the exterior of the building from the stadium, what's inside is what will amaze you. When players reported for fall camp leading up to the 2014 season, they were greeted with a $16 million renovation that included a fully renovated locker room, players' lounge, training rooms, meeting rooms, and coaches' offices. 
Twelfth Man TV was hard to miss when it debuted before the 2006 season. The structure held a 3,954 square foot screen. Also included in that project were 1,130 feet of ribbon boards and a concert quality sound system. Just when you think you've seen it all comes the new look Kyle Field. We saw a glimpse of it this season with the south end zone enclosed and the east side of the stadium done. Now it's time to finish the job and let fans across the country marvel at one of the finest college football facilities in America. R.C. Slocum has coached at Texas A&M for nearly three decades. He is the winningest coach in school history, and he'll join us next to share some of his memories of the home of the 12th man. At Schaefer Custom Homes, we believe that homes start with families. Our commitment to you starts at the design conception stage and ends with on-time completion. Our hands-on management will be evident throughout your project. Log on to SchaeferCustomHomes.net. It starts. You're on the phone. Nothing is coming in clearly. Next, you find yourself in a public place, and it's hard to make out the conversation. And then, everyone around you seems to be mumbling all the time. Hearing loss. It happens to the best of us. And at Audible Hearing, we want you to know that you don't have to live with it. If you suspect you or someone you know is showing the signs, don't wait. Call today for a free consultation. Audible Hearing. Serving the Brazos Valley for over 50 years. You believe when you see all the changes in me. I'm not alone, not on my own. I'm not the same, I make a change, I am brand new me. Start living. Hi, I'm Will Lewis, Pastor Brazos Fellowship, and I'd like to invite you to join us this weekend. BrazosFellowship.com what do you really want from a bank? Is it taking a picture of your check with your smartphone? We have that. Is it paying your bills online? We can do that. Is it free checking for you or your small business? Got that too. Or is it really knowing you'll get first class customer service from a locally owned community bank? Think about it. The Bank and Trust, local bank, local bankers. Schaefer Custom Homes Superior Construction reflects a keen eye for details and workmanship. We build green because it impacts the environment and offers you a natural-based product. We'll make your home building and buying experience as trouble-free as possible. Log on to SchaeferCustomHomes.net. Back to our special coverage of the implosion of the west side of Kyle Field on air in Aggieland on KBTX News 3, online at KBTX.com and 12thMan.com through our partners at Aggie Athletics. We're counting you down to the uh, final minutes of the implosion of Kyle Field. Kyle comes down at 8 this morning. Here is the man in charge of Controlled Demolition Incorporated on what you will see today. You see the top of the central elevator shaft, the A shaft, that so many people on that side uh, used to ride up and down to the suites in the press box. That's going to be moving first to the west toward Wellborn, followed by the other two shafts. The stadium is going to start to collapse in the center, that construction joint in the middle, and it's going to work back out to the ramps and it's going to roll over. It's not going to flatten out totally. The goal is to bring it down where Linda Mood Demolition can reach it with the, the very large equipment they have here at the site. As the west side of Kyle comes down, a press box full of memories will be brought down with it. More than 30 years now, members of the media have been working there. It's their office space on game day. News 3 Sports' Molly Ferguson spoke with some of those who spent the most time up there. When you think of a typical game day experience at Kyle Field, some may remember big plays from the maroon and white, the distinct sounds of the fight in Texas Aggie band, and three decks full of yelling fans. But high above the on-field action sits, or stands, a group of people who take it all in from a rather different perspective. A press box that's been part of Kyle Field for 35 years becomes home to some of the closest Aggie football followers for many Saturdays each fall. I've really been going to Kyle Field for 39 years, starting 75. So I've seen virtually all the home games since 75. Some 
broadcasters and writers like the Eagles' Robert Cessna have been on the Aggie beat since before this press box was built in 1980. 221 home games have been played since then, and Dave South, the voice of Aggieland, has been on the radio call for 190 of them. Although he's on the job eight floors above field level, he feels every part of the game day environment. You can hear the crowd, you can feel the crowd, and here at Kyle Field we have the best home field advantage, the, great, the greatest atmosphere anywhere in college football, and believe me, I've been everywhere. And so you can sense the 12th man uh, and you feed off of that, and that, that energizes you. It energizes everybody in the radio booth. On average, 250 press box credentials are handed out each football season, but after years of working together, to some it might feel more like a clubhouse. It's all about the friends, and you think about people like Scott DeLucia and Chip Howard have almost been there from the start along with me, and you think about the sports information directors, all the camaraderie, all the riders, uh, the broadcasters, we're waiting in line for food, we're waiting in line for quotes. That's what you got to remember most about Cal Field, at least I do. Beyond the friendship, there's another thing most will never forget. As thousands of fans saw Varsity's horns off during the war hymn, the press box itself sways along with them. First timers up there, it scares them because you can look at a bottle of water sitting in front of you and that water is rocking back and forth inside that bottle. But I got to admit, for the Texas games, uh, wow, I would just sit there and say, Lord, help us through. And then we overcome the LSU game. We just were sitting there a few more sways and we're out of there. So God smiled on us. So we'll be in the new press box. As many people relocate from the west side to the east in 2015, parts of the old press box will make their way over to the new. I took the sign off the door of the radio booth. It said Texas A&M Sports Network. And I had everybody that worked that last broadcast sign it. And I'm going to hang it on the wall in the new booth on the east side next year. Some of the memories from the press box, iconic press box here at Kyle Field, those who covered ball games here. Absolutely. We have been asking you at KBTX.com for your input on the most memorable games, whether you watch them from the press box, from the field, from the stands, or at home. Here is number two on the list. For years, Texas A&M has had a maroon out game, but there's only one red, white, and blue out. Now, 13 years ago, the Aggie family came together at Kyle Field 11 days after the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001, with fans on the third deck wearing red, the second deck white, and the first deck blue. Close to 70,000 t-shirts were sold the week leading up to the game. The people in the stands overshadowed the action on the field that day. Jamar Taylor scored what proved to be the game-winning touchdown on a 19-yard pass from Mark Ferris in the third quarter, and Eric Crutchfield fell on a block punt in the end zone in the fourth quarter of a 21-7 Texas A&M win. More than $150,000 were raised and donated to New York City Fire Department charities, yet again proving patriotism in Texas A&M go hand in hand. What a proud moment that was at Kyle Field back in 2001. Longtime Texas A&M head football coach R.C. Slocum is joining us this morning. And, Coach, spent a lot of time on the sidelines, a lot of time in the bowels of Kyle Field. You coached 34 years, 29 of those, I think, at Texas A&M. Um, 30, 30 years at A&M. 30, was it 30? 30 seasons, uh-huh. Um, sadness? Or excitement? You know, mixed feelings, uh, mostly excitement. Uh, I have some great memories, you know, the, the great players, first of all, that uh, I was fortunate to be associated with. Uh, you think about them and the great coaches, some of them no longer with us. Uh, Emre Ballard, who brought me to Texas A&M, think about him and us going to those little, uh, little small locker rooms, coaches' dressing room, uh, and uh, it, it's, uh, uh, it's exciting to see the progress that we're making in and how far we've come since those days with Emory. We just watched the red, white, and blue out game. I know you were proud, obviously, of the effort on the field and proud of the student body as well for what they did. I, I don't think that could have happened anywhere but Texas A&M. Uh, the students came to me early in the week, like on Monday, and told me what they're thinking about doing and would I support it. And I said, yeah, we'll wear the shirts on the sideline if you'll get us the shirts. And I think it's a great idea. And they're just phenomenal. Uh, at the time, I thought it'd be some of the students or some of the fans. And you have to give Oklahoma State fans some credit, too, that they 
went along with the thing, and that, that picture is a, one of the most unique pictures in college football as far as I'm concerned. In 1999, I know the university was dealing with the tragedy of the bonfire, and, and you really felt like it was important for this football team to help the Aggies in the healing process. And you guys went out and did it when you knocked out, knocked off fifth-ranked Texas. Well, we did. I, that, I felt uh, more pressure to win that game. I, I just couldn't envision us not winning that game. And uh, there had been so much pain in Aggie land, and we needed something good. And it was just kind of a relief. You know, our, our, our kids, I thought, did a great job of, of – you know, working and staying uh, focused in terms of preparation, but going out and playing the game. It was, it was a, a, a really uh, a meaningful win. One of my fondest memories of Kyle Field then took place uh, a couple years later in 2002. It was against number one ranked Oklahoma, and I remember that day like it was yesterday. I remember it was a perfect Saturday college football day, not a cloud in the sky, and I kind of walked up to you and I said, Coach, this would be a great day for an upset. And you kind of gave me that Slocum grin and you said, Daryl, it sure would be. And you guys certainly delivered that day. That yeah, was a great win. It's the only time uh, now we'll be in the history of Kyle Field that we beat a number one ranked team uh, on Kyle Field. And uh, upset the number one ranked Oklahoma team that day. And that, that was a fun, fun day. Yeah, uh, ironic, though, that it was your last win at Kyle Field. My last win was on the number one team in the nation. I'll take it. There can't be that many that it's ever happened in the history That's of college right. football. That's what a right. way to end it. And, yeah. uh, Coach, for you taking some time out for us today, I know you're going to be here to watch it, but uh, taking some time on our set, we greatly appreciate your perspective. Thank you, guys. Appreciate, Thank you. It. appreciate it, Coach, the time down the walk down memory lane. We're uh, closing in on the demolition of Kyle Field's west side after the break. We are going to go commercial-free until the big moment. And some top a &M officials are going to be weighing in on this major event in the history of Texas A&M, and we will show you what Kyle will look like when this redevelopment is all said and done. That is still to come on this broadcast just two minutes away. At Schaefer Custom Homes, we believe that homes start with families. Our commitment to you starts at the design conception stage and ends with on-time completion. Our hands-on management will be evident throughout your project. Log on to SchaeferCustomHomes.net. What could that be? Mattress. We're celebrating the holidays with surprising values. Right now, get the Durango Firm Queen for just $7.49. Enjoy excellent motion separation for an undisturbed night's rest. Also, save big on our best-selling Summit Queen Mattress. Now just $1.99. Quality, service, selection, and value. Why shop anywhere else? Get a great price on a better night's sleep. Happy holidays from Denver Mattress. Santa's Wonderland, a Texas Christmas experience, is bigger and better this year. Come visit us in College Station to see millions of dazzling Christmas lights. Plus, enjoy a holiday adventure in Santa's Town with double the walking space and more food and fun than ever before. Save time and money by purchasing your tickets online and save even more with our Super Saver tickets. Santa's Wonderland is located in College Station. For more information and to buy advanced tickets online, go to santas-wonderland.com. Whether you're brand new to the Brazos Valley or a lifelong resident, you can find a home at St. Thomas Episcopal Church. We offer opportunities for worship, education, service to the wider community, and fun programs for all ages. Come join us on Sundays or at one of our many weekday gatherings. St. Thomas Episcopal Church. You belong here. Schaefer Custom Homes Superior Construction reflects the keen eye for details and workmanship. We build green because it impacts the environment and offers you a natural-based product. We'll make your home building and buying experience as trouble-free as possible. Log on to SchaeferCustomHomes.net. Welcome back to Kyle Comes Down. 
as we get close to the implosion of the west side, we'll be commercial free the, west of the rest of the way until we get to the big moment. And you can follow Aggie Athletics on a number of social media platforms. On Facebook, you can search for Texas A&M Athletics. Over on Twitter, you can follow them at 12th Man. Plus, the KBTX Sports team is on social media. On Facebook, search for KBTX Sports. And just push those two words together, throw an at sign in front of it. You will find us on the Twitter. Control Demolition Incorporated is the company that is bringing down the west side today, but this certainly isn't their first big project. The home of the Mariners and the Seahawks in Seattle came down in March of 2000. When it was imploded, the kingdom's demise was a Guinness World Record for largest structure by volume to be demolished with explosives. The RCA Dome in Indianapolis was the home of the Indianapolis Colts, Final Fours, and Indiana High School Basketball Championship Games. It came down in December of 2008, courtesy of CDI. And this one's my personal favorite. The most recent big sports project CDI touts, the Dev Nelson Press Box at Bill Snyder Family Stadium at Kansas State. The four-story steel structure falling back in December of 2012. Earlier this week, the president of CDI provided a little more info on today's demolition. Instant demolition. One thing it does is it gives an old girl like this a chance to be on the front page one more time. And it's going to happen quickly. In, in about 17 seconds or so, uh, the initiation charges will be going off, and then the main demolition charges are going off. What are the initiation charges? There has been some concern here about bats, which are also part of your culture here at the stadium. Bats and, and pigeons. The early charges that initiate the explosives are going to be scare charges also to get the bats and, and the remaining pigeons roosting here, get them in flight so they'll be fine as part, during the demolition as the structure comes down. Uh, you'll hear a lot of, of reports, very sharp reports, and nothing's going to happen, I'll warn you now. But then you'll hear a lower report, a very deep booming, and that's when the structure will come down. That is when it will come down. Good morning, down. Let's everyone. Go back we out are to live. The arena and join Carla Castillo for an update of what's going on out there. And Carla. I'm assuming, Carla, it's grown a little bit in the half hour since you've been out there. Good morning, everyone. We are live from the parking lot of Reed Arena, and I've got to tell you, if you're not out here, you still have plenty of time, and you want to get out here because there's great Aggies from everywhere and from hey, every Steve, generation out here, Can including you come here? Randy and his boys, who have got quite the party going on here. Randy, tell us about your crew and why you all decided to come out here today. Howdy and good morning. Uh, most of us guys, have uh, we all went to school together. Um, we've enjoyed a lot of Aggie football, a lot of memories, a lot of traditions, and we're here this morning to beat the hell out of Feel dust. And what is it going to be like to watch it go down? You know, there's been mixed reactions on social media. Some people are saying there's such a rich history and tradition and coming there with the family members year after year and watching it go down. But the good news is it will be rebuilt, so it's not like it's gone forever, right? Yeah, and that is exactly right. Uh, today's kind of bittersweet, you know. Some of these guys have had season tickets here since we got out of school uh, in the early and mid-70s. And, and uh, one of our group back here has had season tickets, same spot on West Side for 30 plus years and so for for all of us it's a it's a it's an exciting moment you know we're uh, saw a lot of great Aggie football games here from Kyle Field and we'll see a lot more games in the future but you know this is progress and we're excited to be part of it well we are glad you are here thanks so much for joining the festivities creating the festivities really y'all are a great uh, group to be around and you still have plenty of time to come on down here you may want to bring an extra jacket some blankets and some gloves and I imagine Shell will probably uh, follow that advice or recommend that same stuff, right, Shell? Yeah, Carla, that's right. It is a little bit of a uh, chilly morning out here, a little nice morning for an implosion, if you will. Temperatures are in the 40s. Now, the good news is we have clouds that kind of held the temperatures up. They could have dropped a little more overnight, but we're sitting at 49 degrees. When you factor in a wind, especially up here on top of the uh, West Campus Garage, it gets a little cooler. feels more like about the mid to upper 40s out there. The wind is blowing out of the east, so what that means is it's blowing from the east to the west. It's pointed towards West Campus and towards just about everybody. We've mentioned it a couple times, so they say it once 
this uh, thing comes down, that dust will be headed our way. Visibility, it's not quite as bad as it was. It was a little misty, a little foggy earlier. Those ceilings have lifted a bit, but visibility over at Eastwood Airport, about three miles away, coming in at about six miles. Talking a lot about memories uh, this day, you've got a pretty unique and special one. It's a pretty good one. The folks, you know, we've been thanking Aggie Athletics all day. got to say a big thanks to them because uh, I actually proposed to my wife on the uh, west side of Kyle Field. Our first game, we went to the OU game together, and uh, we sat on the west side. So I figured, why not kind of go back to where it started? So we went to the west side. I took her up there. We were the only people in Kyle Field. They gave us a 30-minute window. And when we got up there, she said, "What? what's going on? Did you buy me season tickets? And I was like, <laughs> kind of. So Very nice. And she said yes. So there you go. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And now they're blowing it up. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Shell. Kyle Field certainly has impressed us halfway through its redevelopment. The folks at uh, Manhattan Construction Company making the changes happen, and they passed along some statistics, that is, that uh, will make all the changes seem even bigger. A story we first brought you on Aggie Game Day. Of course, KBTX's award-winning pregame show that has been live from Kyle Field before each home game for more than a decade. When it comes to Kyle Field, there are a few notable numbers. <laughs> But just how massive is this project? We asked a few students for their best guesses. How many bricks do you think so far have been used on Kyle Field? Say 115,000. Probably close to uh, 800,000. 10, 100,000, 100,000. Truckloads of debris have been removed from Kyle Field. It's gonna be crazy. Probably like 500 plus. I'd say like 1500. How many pounds of structural steel has been used so far? Um, 10 tons. Okay. I think it's more than these are like <laughs> random guesses. I don't know what it is. 2,500 tons. How many new flights of stairs have been put in? I went by there the other night, so like... And you counted them? Yeah, I, I counted them. Um, you should know. Let's see. Let's say like... Mm, 50. How many gallons of paint? Gallons of paint, um, uh, maybe like 4,000 or so. I'm not 100% sure on that. How many doors? Doors. It's going to be like in the hundreds probably for bathrooms. Uh, no. Bathrooms? Uh, there's a lot of bathrooms. Uh, probably like, I don't know, 100. I'm going to go 250. 250. We're going to go 250. Okay, we're a little off. Just, ever just so a little bit. Ever so slightly. We are waiting on speeches from some Texas A&M officials. They are due to start in just a few minutes' time. We may actually have to dump out of this story early, but we wanted to give you a little bit of a view of what's set to happen next at Kyle. When it's all said and done, Manhattan Vaughn estimating that 14,820 tons of st st structural steel is going to be used at Kyle. That's nearly 30 million pounds. 2.1 million bricks are set to be laid. Nearly 4.5 million feet of wire that will need to be installed installed, and 9,600 gallons of paint that will be spread. That's a lot of brushes. Absolutely. Here is Texas A&M's redevelopment video. You saw this when they announced what was coming next. We're going to give you a little sneak peek of what all that wiring bricks and all that fun stuff is going to look like when it's done. On the north end of the stadium, in the area between Kyle Field and the Memorial Student Center, will be Kyle Field Park. Developed as a metaphor for a football field, this spacious plaza will honor the great moments, teams, and players of the rich history that is Texas A&M, while also serving as a primary pre- and post-game gathering place for multi-generations of Aggies. 
The west side of the stadium is traditionally reserved for former students. Those who grew and matured and learned from their experience as members of the 12th man and who now choose to give back to their beloved university through service, leadership, and financial commitment. The west side features Victory Plaza, a fully landscaped, upscale tailgating and gathering area. Throughout the plaza are memorials to our six core values, excellence, leadership, integrity, selfless service, respect, and loyalty to remind the world and ourselves that these values are what truly make us unique, different, and great. The majestic entrance into the west side leads all premium and priority seat holders into the magnificent Champions Hall, a three-story air-conditioned concourse with vastly enhanced concessions, merchandising, and restrooms that serves as the new home of the Aggie Sports Museum and is also capable of hosting large-scale events throughout the year. At the top of the first level, one of the most unique features of the stadium redevelopment is found. The Founder Suites. These 12 ultra-luxurious suites with over 960 square feet of finished space will feature extremely high-end finishes as well as 20 theater-style seats with a premier view of the field. In addition, these 12 suites will have their own exclusive lounge area accessible only to those seated in these areas. The second deck of the west side features a high-end private club extending from goal line to goal line designed to service the 3,500 club seats located in the second deck of the west side as well as the suites and loge boxes. The East and West Suites will host from 12 to 17 patrons and will allow fans the ability to choose whether they want portions of their suite to be climate controlled behind glass or to be fully open, allowing fans to soak in the full game day environment. Another unique product offering will be Loge Boxes, four and six person mini suites that will provide a unique game day viewing environment. I say we pull our money together and get a loge box. Four to six? So I think we can just hang out there, right? I've got five dollars to throw down on that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go five fifty. Five fifty, excellent. Sure. Five hundred five hundred fifty. No, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, there was a fifty cents there. <laughs> got, a, got a point. My place is on the field. That's where I've always been. I'm not going anywhere else. But the thing I really like about the fact that Kyle Field and the redevelopment, you can still stand covering the games. I can't tell you how many stadiums I've been to where you have to kneel. Yeah. And that's just hard on my old knees. I, I've seen you down there with a I used to they have a camp <laughs> stool, yeah, back yeah. in the day. Yeah, when you when you couldn't stand, I had a stool. But yeah. You know, the, the best part about this whole thing to me has been for the last several weeks listening to how many people have started conversations with remember when. Yeah. And that, that just carries you back through the process of when this thing got here. You know, I got here in 82, and they were already talking about the history of Kyle Field then. So imagine what's happened over the last 30 years and the memories that people will go with. John Sharp is the chancellor of the Texas A&M system. He and the region's chair. Chairman Phil Adams to speak right now. Largest redevelopment program for for a stadium in the state of Texas, and uh, to begin our program, our brief program today, uh, I present the chairman of the Board of Regents of Texas A&M University System, Phil Adams. Thank you, Chancellor. Howdy, and good morning. What a wonderful, exciting, historic. Sabbath. Yes, what a wonderful Sunday morning. I promise I'm not going to preach. This is, uh, this is such an exciting time in our history. And on behalf of the Board of Regents of the Texas A&M University System, we want you to know that it's been a great privilege and a great honor for us to have had the opportunity to be involved in a small way in this project. Um, it's so exciting when we think about all the great memories that we've shared together over the years. We look back, now we look forward to a new day, a new beginning at our wonderful redeveloped Kyle Field. We anticipate eagerly 
this next chapter in our lives as Aggies. We can't, uh, it's, it's hard to imagine when, when we think back about the countless times that we have walked, walked through these gates to our, into our beloved Kyle Field to attend games, stand with our Aggie, Aggie families, cheer our team, and to share in all the traditions that have made Texas A&M continue to make us great. We only hope that we have the chance, the opportunity to walk through those gates together many, many more times. We anticipate uh, with much excitement and eagerness the new redeveloped Kyle Field this coming fall, September 2015. At this time, I want to thank the Board of Regents for their support in this project, this incredible redevelopment of what will be the premier college football stadium in all of America. I want to thank Chancellor Sharp for his unbelievable leadership. Let me tell you, uh, it, it, it wasn't easy all the way, as we all know, but thanks to, to John Sharp and the, his system leadership, Philip Ray, been so many, Mark Hussey and the leadership at Texas A&M. And let me say a very special thank you to the 12th Man Foundation. They, their leadership and their commitment throughout has really been unbelievable. And I have seen so many of the 12th Man Foundation leaders here today, and you could just, it'd take an hour to mention everybody, but thank you, Skip Wagner, Sam Torn, Bob McLaren, so, so many of you. It, it's just amazing. A resounding thank you to you and to all the big donors, all of you donors who have uh, have made this possible. It's it's a wonderful thing. In just a few minutes, uh, the west side of Kyle Field is going to be tumbling down, and so we just have to be proud for for what's coming this fall, September of 2015. Can't wait for us all to be together in the new Kyle Field. Thank you very, very, very much. God bless you. Gig them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Adams. We also have some other regents here. We'd like to present them to you. Uh, the Vice Chairman of the Board of Regents, uh, Cliff Thomas. Dr. Thomas, where are you? Right here. Uh, John White from Houston, member of the Board of Regents right here. Elaine Mendoza from San Antonio, right over here. Charles Swartz from Houston, back in the back. And uh, Jim Swartner from Swartner. Where's Swartner from Swartner? Right here. And we also have former Regent Jim Wilson. Jim, who is a huge athletic supporter. That didn't sound right, but anyway. <laughs> Okay, that's good. <laughs> Over in this corner, uh, we have a group of legislators that are Aggies, and we're proud to have them here. We have uh, Trent Ashby, uh, John Ray, Ryan Ginn, Bruce Slover, Bill Flores is here, represented by James Edge, uh, John Whitmire, who is a uh, wannabe Aggie. He's, he's so close, we're going to let him in, we think. And a big supporter of ours, John Rainey, Molly White, uh, Representative Bohawk and Representative Doc Anderson are also here. Thank you guys for everything that you do to help Texas A&M when the time comes. And a big thank you for uh, to the 12th man. Let me tell you about the 12th man. Uh, the records that were set uh, last year and the year before in terms of fundraising uh, philanthropically by the whole A&M uh, family uh, largely was due to what happened with the 12th man. Uh, it is a record that was produced last year, 800 and something million dollars. It probably will be a long time in being broken. But they didn't stop there. Let me tell you something else. You know, we have been talking about this being a $450 million renovation, which is, the, which is the largest redevelopment ever to occur anywhere in the United States in the college sports. 
But they didn't stop there. They decided that the seat backs ought to have higher quality, that we ought to have some restaurants on this side, that we ought to have better finishes. And I'm here to tell you today that the 12th man went beyond 450, added $35 million to it, and this is a $485 million project. Sam Torn and your folks, and Skip, thank you very much for what you guys have done over here. So, Bigger just got uh, just got bigger again. So thank you for, for everything that, that they have done. The people here from the 12th man represent the families uh, that have made some of the largest sacrifices uh, in terms of putting money and time and talent into this stadium. And we will, Aggies forever will be grateful for this. I, I look at this, every one of us here will remember this until they put us in the ground. Uh, the closest I can remember to this was when the first wrecking ball hit Guyon Hall, which stood where Rudder Tower was. And the reason I remember that and link it to this is, the, is that the office of, of C.K. Estes, who was the voice of Kyle Field back when I was in school, uh, if you remember that the old Yankee voice, good afternoon football fans, welcome to Kyle Field, home of the fighting Texas Aggies, and then he got fired because he didn't turn the mic off and said something he shouldn't have said right after that. Uh, but that pales in comparison as to what's going to happen here. You will hear some minor explosions at the beginning. The reason for that is uh, scare birds and stuff like that uh, that's out, that, uh, that are in the stadium and get them out. Uh, and then you'll see uh, the elevator shaft fall toward Welburn Road. I am told it will not hit Welburn Road, Philip be close <laughs> and then the press box will fall back this way and then it'll come down and the, the let me tell you something our partners in this Manhattan Vaughn they are the best in the world they hadn't been behind a day in the whole process there were some folks that were saying oh my god it's not possible to build this thing the way the way they did it but Manhattan Vaughn Philip Ray Ru Russ Wallace and their folks Santee and these guys are the best. We've got the best partners and, and maybe it's because they're also Aggies and they've got a little pride, uh, uh, you know, school pride involved in this too, but this has been a marvelous project. This implosion is occurring um, about uh, seven days earlier. It was supposed to occur on the 28th. It's occurring on the 21st and so we've got an extra week. Uh, this will be ready for football and it will be the best sports venue that exists anywhere in the United States, period. And uh, it's gonna be here in College Station. And we know uh, that future football programs will match your commitment, your sacrifice, and your support, and your excellence that, 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 that all of you expect. And, and, uh, and, and we know that's gonna be there as well, too. And so, uh, we got 10 minutes. You're probably thinking, we're going to go up here and, and, and plunge this. I could walk over there and blow that thing up right now, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> now, I'd like to call on uh, President Mark Hussey to come up here, uh, the chairman of the board, Phil Adams, to come up here, uh, the vice chairman of the board, Cliff Thomas, to come up here, and Sam Torn to come up here in a few minutes, maybe right now. And uh, and stand behind this, and we're going to take some some pictures before you before you actually pull that thing. We also have some folks here from A and M. Karen Watson, the provost, is here somewhere. Karen's right back there. Glenn Lane, who's the vice president of research, is here. Brett Girard, who's the CEO of the Health Science Center. And while those folks take their pictures and all the A&M officials come up here, again, that was the uh, chairman of the Board of Regents, Phil Adams, and the chancellor, John Sharp, talking about a new day, a new beginning, and historic, exciting Sabbath at Texas A&M University. You know, I'm, uh, I've got newfound respect for John Sharp. Not that I didn't respect him already, but <laughs> to call Jim, R Jim Wilson a huge athletic, athletic supporter <laughs> was awesome. I think, And then for him to announce the fact that the 12th man has stepped up 
up with another 35 million bucks. So this is a 485 million dollar project, yeah. and he is right. Uh, bigger got better. <laughs> bigger got bigger again. Yeah, absolutely. That's pretty awesome. Hey, we got a few minutes to burn before the big day, and we got some highlights. You know how to do highlights, right? We are going to talk about the fact that a week from tomorrow, the Aggies are going to head to uh, Memphis for the Liberty Bowl, and they are going to face West Virginia. And we are going to take a look back at the season it was of 2014. In the season opener, Kenny Hill made his first start, a memorable one, as he broke Johnny Manziel's single game passing record. He finished with uh, 44 of 60 completed passes. He threw to 12 different receivers for 511 yards and three touchdowns. And the Aggies rolled in their season opener as they beat South Carolina by a final score of 52 to 28. Off the win over the then number nine team in the country, the Aggies destroyed the Lamar Cardinals at the half redeveloped Kyle Field. We had a two hour storm delay, even though a drop of rain didn't even fall on Kyle. Hill tossing four touchdowns in less than three quarters. And Trey Williams found the end zone for one of the Aggies' four rushing scores when it was all said and done. AM 73, Lamar three. Against Rice, Hill continued to have a hot hand. The Aggies struggled a bit in the first half, but got it going in the second. A Hill to Josh Reynolds score was one of four touchdowns thrown for Kenny. AM went to 3 0 on the year with a 38 10 win. All in the uh, plane surface that they played on and had to be replaced after the game because, as you know, they had some rain damage. The Yaggies went to 4-0 for the first time since 2006 with a route in Dallas. Jeremy Tabuyo turning two short passes into long scores. a and racking up 663 total yards against an SMU team playing its first game without head coach June Jones. Aggies roll 58-6. A dramatic comeback at Jerry's World and a familiar face on hand. Johnny Manziel trailing by two touchdowns in the fourth to Arkansas. Hill threw a pair of scores, one to Edward Pope for 86 yards and one to Josh Reynolds covering 59 yards with two minutes to go. The Aggies then get a Malcolm Kennedy touchdown and a stop in overtime. They beat Arkansas to go to 5-0 for the first time since 2001. And then a little bit of a slide. A highlight reel catch by Speedy Noyle, unfortunately not worth more than six points. Worth some airtime on SportsCenter, though. Mississippi State quarterback Dak Prescott running for three touchdowns. He threw for a pair as well. 19 of 25. 264 yards in the air, 77 on the ground. Bulldogs get to a three-touchdown lead and win by 17. A return trip to Kyle Field didn't help matters. Ole Miss got control from the start. Bo Wallace accounted for three touchdowns, and the Rebel defense got a pair of their own. Kenny Hill turning it over three times despite 401 yards passing, and it was a second straight loss for A&M, 35-20. And then there was Alabama. In one of the most lopsided defeats in program history, the Aggies gave up 45 first-half points. Blake Sims throwing for 268 yards, three touchdowns, and a 43-yard run for a score. When it was all said and done, Bama rolling 59 nothing. The Aggies, a three-game losing streak. Louisiana Monroe was anything but an easy game. Kyle Allen made his first start in place of Kenny Hill, who was suspended for violating team rules. Spitty Noyle with the highlight catch here late in the first half to make it 21-7. The Aggies wouldn't score again, but they do hang on for a 21-16 victory to break the three-game losing streak. A second trip to a state of Alabama powerhouse with a hugely different outcome for the Aggies. A blocked field goal at the end of the first half by Miles Garrett, returned by DeShazer Everett, 65 yards for six, probably the highlight of the game, and it's one the Aggies held on to win over the third-ranked Auburn Tigers, 41-38. Missouri Tigers ran all over the Aggies, back at Kyle Field in the rain. Russell Hansborough comes up a yard shy of 200 yards rushing and scores two touchdowns, one from 49 yards out, the other from 45. Missouri scores 28 third-quarter points, and they pick up the 34-27 win over the Aggies. And in a third straight game, Game against a Tiger team. LSU came for Thanksgiving and got a career game and a crushing run from Leonard Fournette. 146 yards and a touchdown for the 19-year-old freshman who led Louisiana State to its fourth straight win over the Aggies. AM finishing the regular season at 7-5, and 3-5 and five in the conference of record. News 3 Sports will be in Memphis next Monday as the Aggies take on the Mountaineers in the 56th annual AutoZone Liberty Bowl will be A&M's second appearance in the game. The first was back in 1975 when they were shut out by USC. The game kicks off at 1. It will be televised by ESPN, and the Aggies will be looking to run their bowl winning streak to four consecutive games. West Virginia, though, is a three-and-a-half point favorite right now. It should be a high-scoring affair by all accounts, and uh, so we're just a few minutes away from this happening. You know, all the highlights that you just showed, the good, the bad, and the ugly of the, of the 14th season, and you go back to the history 
history of, of Kyle Field, the press box, the, the east side, west side, all the differences and the changes of the look of what's going to happen here. As I recall, not a single down has been played in the press box. That's true. I, and I, I've looked through the history books. I've talked to the historians. Uh, I once had a conversation with Billy Pickard and wanted to know how many times they've had to stretch the chain from one side of the press box to the other or to listen to voices like Roger Feldman uh, talk about, you know, as a PA announcer, describing the games at Kyle Field. You know, Chase Murphy now does that and does an outstanding job. But it's those types of people, the Billy Pickards, the Roger Feldmans of the past, is what people, when Kyle Field comes down, when this side of it comes down, the press box comes down, that's what they're going to remember. I, I know you've got a Billy Pickard story real quickly before we get to this. I think you can sneak this in. The uh, Hurricane Bowl when Aiden played Alabama in 1988, they were supposed to come earlier in the season, but Hurricane Gilbert kept them from coming. Uh, they decided, well, we decided we were going to do a bowl show, and we did a bowl show, and we decided we were going to do it inside Kyle Field, and Mr. Pickard says, well, Daryl, I'm not going to be here, so do you mind turning off the lights and locking up when you finish? <laughs> and I just appreciated and have never forgotten how he has remembered that and trusted me with that. You didn't get the chance to lock up after your engagement. I did not. Well, they locked us inside. I, <laughs> I told you, we had 30 minutes. We got locked inside Kyle Field, and we had to figure out how to get out of the city. Are you sure it wasn't I've, Daryl that locked yeah, you? Maybe. <laughs> he still has the key. I, I've heard about couples inside Kyle Field, and I'll just leave it at that. I think we're going to go here. All right. Uh, we're pretty close. I think we're less than a minute out. We're just going to go to the podium. We're going to let this moment happen seconds. for you, and they're going to take it away. We're about 30 seconds from the big moment. Kyle Field coming down. Twenty seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We have ignition. Just 17 seconds, the home of the 12th man has changed forever. Get some pictures. 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 Okay, here it comes. Hang on. The, uh, the dust cloud is about to hit us. <laughs> so, I was reading on Twitter, people were saying they should play Sandstorm. Yeah, this is Dust Storm. We got our Sandstorm. This is it right now. This <laughs> is concrete <laughs> dust right here. <laughs> my wow. goodness. Hey, Shell, I'm going to hand you my cleaning bill. Is that, if that's not a problem. I'll take the blame for this. I'm one. going, Pride Cleaners is not going to know what hit them <laughs> here in a little bit. I'd, I'd go ahead oh, and man. play through. I don't think the heavy stuff's going to come down for a while. I, but, but in all seriousness yeah how awesome was that amazing yeah absolutely was, amazing uh, it's worth the dry cleaning yeah that was really cool and we're uh, having to face forward because of the back of our heads <laughs> my goodness <laughs> yeah hey we're going to uh, take a break here real quick we're going to try to regroup we hope to have a couple of interviews and maybe some clearer conditions and also counting down the number one game in the history of kyle field it has come down on this sunday we're back in two minutes At Schaefer Custom Homes, we believe that homes start with families. Our commitment to you starts at the design conception stage and ends with on-time completion. Our hands-on management will be evident throughout your project. Log on to SchaeferCustomHomes.net. Tray Chic Boutique is the destination for today's woman. Tray Chic creates a comfortable atmosphere with the service you deserve. Enjoy a private, casual shopping experience or have a personal stylist cater to your unique style. Everything you want and exactly what you need. Experience Tray Chic Boutique. Upscale shopping with a down-home atmosphere. 
In the Brazos Valley, breaking weather can pop up at any time. Whether it's severe storms and tornadoes or just an inconvenient downpour. The faster you know, the better prepared you'll be. Keeping the Brazos Valley safe and informed isn't just our job, it's our passion. With the best technology and the biggest team in the Brazos Valley, we take weather seriously. Because you never know when the weather will become the news. KBTX News 3. The people you know, the weather you trust. Children, young adults, senior citizens. No matter what your age, you can find a home at St. Thomas Episcopal Church. From youth group to choirs, service projects throughout the Brazos Valley and beyond, worship, Bible study, and celebrations, you can find your place at St. Thomas Episcopal Church. Come join us in this season and the next. You belong here. Schaefer Custom Homes Superior Construction reflects a keen eye for details and workmanship. We build green because it impacts the environment and offers you a natural-based product. We'll make your home building and buying experience as trouble-free as possible. Log on to SchaeferCustomHomes.net. Okay, got it. Kyle comes down. Building a new tradition is presented by Schaefer Custom Homes. The scene just moments ago at Kyle Field as the west side came down in just a matter of seconds. The unbelievable images that you will see throughout this day, probably into tomorrow. I'm at the CBS this morning. Eye opener probably features a little bit of something of that. Reaction to this all is still to come. <laughs> pretty, pretty sweet. We won't be able to see exactly if it was exactly perfect yeah. until the dust clears in maybe an hour, but uh, it appeared as though it went just like they described it. It was uh, it was a very awesome scene here as the west side came tumbling down. You know, we've talked about the most memorable games at Kyle Field that you guys voted on at KBTX.com. We've gone through number three, and we've gone through number two, and now here is your favorite memory from Kyle Field. No surprise here with 39% of the votes, the bonfire game against Texas on November 26, 1999 is the most memorable game at Kyle Field. Just eight days after the tragic loss of 12 students at the bonfire collapse, the Texas A&M football team helped Aggieland heal by beating the seventh ranked Longhorns 20-16. Texas A&M trailed 16-6 at the half, but shut out the horns in the final 30 minutes. Jamar Toombs' nine-yard touchdown run in the third quarter pulled the Aggies within a field goal. Then in the fourth, Randy McCown found Matt Bumgarner on a 14-yard score that put the Aggies ahead for good. The Aggie defense stopped the Longhorns' last-ditch drive. Jay Brooks sacked and stripped Major Apple White, and Brian Gamble recovered the fumble as Texas A&M topped Texas that very emotional Saturday at Kyle Field. Hey guys, we are uh, still uh, getting a little used to the movement here at Kyle or at Reed Arena. The shaking kind of took me back to my days in California. I'm just kidding. We are here with Brett and Kyle. And so just you all actually you brought some music. You were getting the uh, crowd pumped up. What, what was your reaction to everything? My reaction was that I'm 90% sure I left my cell phone in my seat after the LSU game. <laughs> no, no, it's great. It was a great atmosphere. Uh, we just brought the music, you know, we thought we'd uh, one more time noble men of Kyle and, and uh, the war him and get everybody pumped up and it's a beautiful morning for it. Progress is in the air, yeah. so this is awesome. And Kyle, I gotta know, what's it like to watch your name and your letters falling off that field? Well, actually, I sat there for 20 years on that side of the stadium and it was, you know, it, Kind of a uh, awe-inspiring, you know, event. Uh, but you know, like Brett said, you know, changes in the air, and you know, we're glad for that. Any, what were the emotions? Because I know, you know, I didn't get to go to Texas A&M, but even as I was watching it, you know, you kind of get teary-eyed because it's that bittersweet moment. You see some, so many traditions and so many histories, but then you think of the uh, traditions that will be made with, you know, future Aggies. Well, well it was. Definitely, um, you know, a sad event. You know, you know, being, you know, the Kyle Field, you know, the iconic three three level deck there, and you know, sitting there for uh, 20 years, you know. But uh, it is what it is, and you know, we're looking forward to the, uh, the future. Well, and I have a feeling y'all want to end it with a big old whoop. Whoop! <laughs> Back to y'all. <laughs> Oh, Carla. thank you, Carla. Thank you very much. Greg McClure is heading up this project for Manhattan Vaughn, which includes, obviously, the, the folks at Linda Mood, the folks in Control Demolition, all kind of over your oversight. 
Uh, that was pretty cool. Yes, those are always neat. <laughs> Absolutely. How and many it, of those have you seen? That would be my fourth one. Really? Mm -hmm. What were your first three? I uh, did some downtown buildings in downtown Dallas uh, around a uh, First Baptist Church. Uh, I've done. I uh, was around the Texas Stadium when we imploded it, uh, and then the, uh, of course, this one. And then I've done some actually in in ground stuff when you have to uh, displace rock. But as an so. Aggie, this has to hold a very special. This the whole project fun. obviously Absolutely. has to. Uh, talk about your seeing it. You obviously have a very different perspective. Sure. As you saw it go down, talk us through it. Well, uh, as the uh, charges began to uh, go off, the uh, center tower, just like it had been planned, began to uh, uh, to hit, and the, uh, the, the uh, elevator tower dropped. Uh, we had anticipated it hitting just right before Welburn, and it did. Uh, then the two smaller towers uh, fell back behind it, and everything kind of folded inside the way it was supposed to. We got a perfect pile of rubble down there to be able to get out of the way and uh, move forward. So it did exactly what it was uh, as supposed to do, and uh, real quick quick manner 17 seconds I, I'm kind of I'm kind of a country boy so it was kind of like cutting down a tree right yes, sir. and it That's fell exactly, exactly right. where you wanted it to fall that is correct it we makes had, you feel uh, good we had spent some weeks uh, prior to uh, knocking out some of the uh, uh, stuff out of the way so that it would fall just like a tree we're gonna That's get exactly. uh, we're gonna get Chancellor John Sharp right. up here Daryl's gonna uh, pop a microphone on him so while we're uh, waiting for that uh, this project we've talked before about, a little how, dirty. You might throw that on? about how close this project is to your heart as yes. an Aggie and there are so many Aggies that are working on on this as well, right? uh, We have, uh, I've got about 57 people on my staff, probably about 50 of them are Aggies, and uh, we, we, we feel a little bit more on this one than we normally do on any of the others we've done before, so these these are special, that's for sure. John Sharp, Chancellor of the Texas A&M System. I think I heard you on the mic saying that this looked like Armageddon, but this is almost a new beginning. This isn't the end. That's right. It, it was amazing, and, and I want to second what he had to say. Th these, uh, Manhattan Vaughn has been spectacular, this whole process, and I think one of the reasons is a bunch of Aggie's working on it, so it's a lot of heart as well as uh, as, as uh, skill involved in it. And everything has been either on time or ahead of schedule. Everything ran perfectly, just like this ran perfectly today. Uh, but I tell you what, it was a whole lot more dramatic than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. it, that was a that was a heck of a show. Yeah, when the east side was was redeveloped, and then you guys worked on the the south end zone, that was just that, that kind of crawled a little bit. This man was like 17 seconds, and Absolutely. it was just a a lot happened in 17 yep. seconds. <laughs> yep. The uh, dust cloud kind of uh, popped up and kind of missed some of the bottom side of it, but that's okay. We got to see the most part of it, so mm. it was fun. Yeah. You took a huge amount of pride in talking about the extra money that has come in on this. The the number from the beginning, 450, 450, 450, and now 485 to add what into all this project? Well, there's a whole there's a whole list of enhancements in it. Uh, one, part of it is the restaurants on this side. Part of it is the, just the finish work to make it look even more spectacular seat backs all kinds of things that the 12th man is adding to it uh, but it's a uh it's, uh, and they did that without a lot of spec, you know, with, without a lot of fanfare and everything. They just simply woke up and and added 35 million dollars to uh, to already the biggest rent, you know, uh, redevelopment that exists anywhere in the country. As you said, bigger got even bigger. Bigger got even bigger. <laughs> yes. they've they've been spectacular. Uh, we've been really uh, lucky to get really great bond ratings and stuff like that. We got a great bid from Manhattan Bond. They've stuck to everything that they said they were going to do. And and, uh, everything's been on time, on schedule from day one, and the workers over here have been unbelievable. Those folks, I think they had one day off. That yeah. was Christmas last, last Christmas, year. and they'll probably get this Christmas We're off. Take and that'll Christmas be about this it. Year. <laughs> yeah, we will be back in there this afternoon, making sure everything's good and secure. And tomorrow morning, we'll hit it with uh, more equipment to start hauling off. I think one of the things that's kind of unique is is that I know that old Kyle is gone, but you guys are using some of this stuff as recycled concrete sure. to work on the base and to work on parking lots. So, I mean, old Kyle is not going too far. It's no, just it being does. reused. That is correct. Uh, construction is, is a lot of recycling these days, and uh, like I said, we've already torn down the first deck on, this, uh, on the other side and uh, have used that material back on the base. It's fantastic stuff. Gentlemen, uh, I got one question. Are you going to oh, get yeah. this coat cleaned or are you going to like put it in some kind of a glass case and hang it in your office? Because that's pretty cool. I mean, you know, old oh, Kyle I dust. Oh, I have looked at it. That's a mess. It's a little I, dirty. I have a question. <laughs> Where do we send our dry cleaning bills? Do we go him dry cleaners are going to do you? good this, this week, aren't is, they? Is that part of the $35 million <laughs> is our dry cleaning? Because that that's would be right. fantastic. That's right. Well, you're big TV station. You can afford all so this. We got that down. No problem. <laughs> hey, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much. Greg McClure with Manhattan. Vaughn still about, uh, gosh, how many more months to go? About nine. About nine.
nine months to go. Thank Absolutely. you very much. And Chancellor, thank you so much for your time as well. As we take one more look at this absolutely amazing moment, a moment in time, this is never going to be done here again probably. Kyle Field, the west side, comes down. We want to thank you very much wherever you are in the world. Hey, I know Lyle Lovett is watching in his compound. Bill Flores, the congressman, tweeted me earlier. No matter where you are, no matter who you are, thank you so much for being a part of this history-making event here at Texas A&M University, which we'll recap later on News 3. And we will see you in 2015 in the redone, redeveloped, brand-new, sparkling Kyle Field next season.